Okay. All right. Let's get let's get into it. <laughs> you holding your breath? <laughs> I'll see what you're gonna do. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Light Drop Podcast. Just two friends talking creativity and beyond. My name's Jamil. My name is Jeff. Yeah, you might have heard us half talking about random stuff before the episode starts. We do that often. And then we're just like, hey, hit record. Yeah, let's just start. <laughs> Get it rolling <laughs> at some point. Did you, um, did you see my LinkedIn post uh, this week? Which one? Uh, it was the one about uh, the water on pirates yeah i saw that yeah you saw that yeah you, kind of, you did kind of like a breakdown almost um yeah i love the screenshots i mean that no, was great thank you thank you thank yeah, you yeah, glad to see i'm glad to see you liked it no i was um yeah i wanted to ask you you know i was thinking about what we were going to talk about today when i wanted to ask you about and it was um it was that pretty much because I made the post, um, and it, it was a post where I essentially just told a story about a project I worked on like earlier in my career where I was given what I thought at the time was a pretty like unexciting task of lighting water on this movie as opposed to all the cool ghost pirates and mm. and other characters and stuff that was like the alternative to that and it was just like this whole summer that I was obsessed <laughs> obsessing over this task that it turned into yeah because the movie was Pirates of the Caribbean and my leads they you know everybody kind of knows how to quote unquote light or light water or they know what they want the water to look like mm -hmm. but as far as executing goes there wasn't anyone on the team who's really done it before mm -hmm. so the task was okay we have this shader which just a brief I'm, i feel like i'm gonna have to do a whole bunch of segues to explain to explain each of these terms but yeah because i don't i mean i, I kind of know because i've worked with like Keyshot, um and but there's definitely some things that i'm like that's too advanced but yeah i think for the sake of the podcast i think just segueing and explaining a few things yeah let me because i because as i'm as i'm talking about the story i'm like wait a minute i, I should probably i should probably go back a couple steps okay so just just to remember for anyone listening who may um who may not have uh listened to us in the past i work as a lighting artist and so my job is essentially to take the um the assets that are given to us by the modelers and the animators and everything that goes into a, a shot whether it be on a movie or an animated movie or a commercial, um, oftentimes where it's live action footage involved. So there's some computer generated elements alongside some live action actors or characters or whatever. And as a lighting artist, my job is to integrate that in with the live action or to otherwise bring the scene to life. Because prior to arriving to me, it's just a gray, you know, it's just a gray scale kind of render, right? Mm -hmm. And so on this particular movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, there's water in damn near every scene, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they're always on the ocean. And so you couldn't necessarily ask every individual lighter on this movie. And there are a lot of shots. So on this particular movie, I think there were... There were at least like 15 lighters, 15 different lighters um, working working on Pirates for MPC, which is the company that I was at. And 
you don't want to have each one of them trying to figure out individually how to light water because you're going to end up with water that looks a little bit different across all these different shots. So the, my lead said, okay, Jamil, figure this out, (laughs) figure out the water look because we have this Tessendorf shader and the Tessendorf shader. I don't know his first name, but I know that Tessendorf was his last name. I believe he was a college professor somewhere who many years ago kind of came up with a math. He sort of figured out the mathematics behind um, the way waves and stuff work, Mm -hmm. you know, like on the surface. Yeah. Um, And so the Tessendorf shader that MPC had was this kind of proprietary shader that had all of those mathematics built into it with a bunch of different um, controls exposed for the artist to be able to manipulate to, um, you know, to get that shader. And so a shader, like I mentioned, I'm a lighting artist. So uh, I'm dealing with um, shaders, which are essentially the surfaces that go onto the CG objects that I'm rendering. So in this particular case, um, if you would think of the water as being an object, all it was is a is a flat plane, right? Yeah. I'm like that was it. It's just a flat plane, and it had this shader applied to it, and the shader is what is what made it look blue or a little bit transparent or a little bit, you know, gray at times, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the shader that is what gives it those visual qualities gotcha. of of water because you you. You just as easily could have put a shader onto this plane that looked like marble, right? And now all of a sudden it just looks like a marble floor. Yeah. You see you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So so this Tessendorf shader was this proprietary shader that MPC had that they've used in the past, you know, on other water movies, but there wasn't anybody on this team who had used it before. So it was my task to figure out A, how to use this shader, how to get it to look good and to just develop this look for Pirates of the Caribbean because, you know, all the water in this movie is, it's got to look nice. It's not stormy water. It's not, you know, lake water. They're, they're always in the Caribbean out in the ocean. Like they want it to look good. And so at first I was like, okay, this, this is going to be fun. Like I would much rather, light the pirates <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, and the ships and stuff like that. But it actually really didn't take me that long to kind of like lean into the task and just be like, okay, how is this working? Right? Mm-hmm. Like I started, I started just noticing water everywhere because that's like in because, real life? because it wasn't yes in real life. And just naturally, right? Like mm-hmm. this, the the reason I started telling this story was because I realized um, just how impactful that experience was towards my ability to observe mm-hmm. and to really observe things in reality and start to ask questions mm-hmm. and the importance of that. Because like I said, over this entire summer, it's just water. Whenever I would see water, it's like, oh, that looks good, or that doesn't look good. Or I would mm-hmm. see water. I would see a puddle walking walking home from work, and I would just stop and look at the ripples kind of going through it, and I would just like, oh, that's why is it doing that? Like, why? You know, there's a whole bunch of nuances that just happen when you just sit down and you just notice water. I would be yeah. drinking water out of a cup and I just kind of like be like looking at water and yeah I I flew home for like a week in the summer to just like because I had some uh some vacation time and I was looking out the plane window I remember actually seeing water like from that distance in that scale Mm -hmm. and and being like ah okay I see now how it's you know I'm comparing that to the Tessendorf shader that I mentioned Mm-hmm. And all the controls that I have, I'm like, how would I be able to get my water to look like that if I wanted to? Like, what's actually happening? What's going on here? How come 
some in some places of the the water it's a little bit flatter other places it's a little bit more raised and bumpy and you know all these yeah. things that i would just notice and a lot of times i would also look at water and be like that's so boring like you know it looks real but if i were to show that they'd be like it's it's not going to cut it that's pretty boring mm. <laughs> you no know? so you have and to so, you have to find like a medium ground of making it interesting still yeah oh man because <laughs> you know every it's always outside obviously when they're in these water shots and so i had to figure out okay if i want the if i want to get some nice little sun speckles across the water where do i need like how is that happening with the sun like like where does the sun need to be in the sky mm -hmm. in order for it to reflect off of the water that way you know yeah. we're we're at a level we're at a level now with technology i mean certainly now but even then where these rendering engines, the software that I was working within, mm -hmm. it was very much, um, it was very based in reality. You know, there, it wasn't necessary for me to have to do a lot of like cheats and mm -hmm. stuff that they would have had to do back in the early days of VFX, you know? So it was very intuitive from the standpoint of like, within my virtual scene, I've got this, this light that's acting as my son yeah. And I just kind of, and, you know, and through just observing in reality, I can kind of figure out the same place here in my virtual scene nice. to, wow. to get, to get these sun dapplings, you know, and speckles mm -hmm. and stuff to be, you know, to, to be able to control that. And it got to the point where it was like, you know, I just knew like they, they knew that I was like the water guy, like, <laughs> They're like, hey, we need we need some more like sun speckles over here, or like for this shot, we're thinking that we want to have this happen and kind of thing. I'd be like, I got you. Yeah. I know exactly like I know exactly where the sun needs to go. You know, they would say early on, I would get a bunch of notes like, Hey, this, you know, the, the sun looks really nice, but it's just missing something. It's missing something. It's just boring. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and the the challenge was oftentimes even the supervisor, you know, the supervisor could probably figure it out, but they don't have that time. That's what they tasked me for is to yep. figure out why it's boring, you know, because even from their standpoint of being able to verbalize it, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> like it looks real, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it's missing. It's like, it's just boring, you know? Yeah. So, it, so that was part of the challenge of, of observing, like trying to find some nice looking waters. Like what's, what is it about this? That's like, very photogenic and interesting and stuff. And I started to realize that, oh, it's, it's the clouds, you know, it's like the clouds in the sky are, you know, being reflected into the water. So how can I like take some clouds and like, you know, figure that out and put some clouds in my scene and position them in such a way so that like, depending on where the camera is, I can get some nice kind of reflections from the sky and like mm -hmm. have this variation and, it was this whole thing that yeah that was like over the course of the summer that I just geeked out over to become this like water expert, this visual yeah. water expert. Even got to the point where I would see water in real life and I'd just be like, mine, mine looks way better. Yeah. Than, than this <laughs> real stuff. <laughs> you know. That's a good point. I mean, that that reminds me of um I've been obviously my background is not in VFX, as everyone knows, but it reminds me of when I was working on, um, you know, you're working on renderings for class projects that I was doing like industrial design. And then, uh, the professors would be like, that doesn't feel like a real object or doesn't look like a real object. And it's because, um, all the, the lines were too crisp. So the, the, the light, when the light hits an object, you know, most objects are, are like soft, they're not sharp angles. Um, and most people don't, I mean, if, if you ask somebody to draw like a TV, they'll just draw it as a, like a rectangle. But when you actually sit down and look at all the different um, aspects of a, like a television, you'll see like small, um, like rounded curves that actually lead to like a, a better viewing surface. Um, so you can see TVs a lot better just because it's like softer. Um, 
but those things matter. They, they matter. And most of us don't pay attention to those things, but when you really do, when you, when you look at something and you're like, look at it with wonder, you're, you're able to learn so much more. And I don't know, that's, that's just what I'm thinking about as you're, as you're talking to me, I'm just like, I mean, there's just so much, if, if you could look at carpet, if you wanted to for, for two hours mm -hmm. and just look at how amazing the textures are, but unless you're, you know, paying attention to that stuff, you'll just ignore it. But yeah. That was, that was the reason I made the post was because I just had this realization just like a week or so ago that I had been doing that professionally. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even realize, I wasn't even conscious of it at the time. Um, and even through all of these like years, but I, you know, the, like I, I just became so conscious recently that the reason I've become so good at lighting and, and at what I do is because I've been just observing all of these things in that way. And, and that experience that I explained on, on pirates was the first time that I really, you know, thinking back, that was the first time that I really just went all like just obsessive for, yeah. for a whole like six months, you know, looking at and just observing stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, it's, it's what really makes you so good, you know, mm -hmm. as like an artist is it, regardless of what your medium is, is to get into that habit of observing, observing reality, asking questions, because that wasn't, you know, that certainly wasn't the last thing that I shaded, right? Like there were, there have been, um, there have been times where I had to do a um, a bowling ball. I had to I had to do this bowling ball once for um for the Pennsylvania Lottery. Have you ever seen those commercials mm -hmm. with the uh with the little what is he like a chipmunk? Not a chipmunk, a squirrel or something. He's like keep on scratching. <laughs> like never, the Pennsylvania. No, nah, I wouldn't. You might have seen it. You probably <laughs> seen it. But but he was like um it was this it was this Pennsylvania Lottery commercial where he was bowling. And um, the visual style for these for those commercials was kind of like those Geico Gecko commercials where it's real, but you've got the fake guy, but he's yeah. supposed to look you know kind of real. Mm -hmm. And so this bowling ball needed to look real also. And you've seen those bowling balls where it's like I don't know how they do it, but it, it's it's kind of like marbly, you know, where mm -hmm. it's like. It's got the surface, but then you can kind of see like Inside. this layer underneath yeah, the yeah. surface kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So it was like I, I had to I had to shade that. You know, the bowling ball was 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 that, and uh, I just had to figure that out. I was like, how, like how is this working? You know, mm -hmm. visually, it's like I just had to kind of analyze it and observe it, and like, you know, that's like a muscle that you if that's a muscle that you flex often then it's easy to kind of like notice these things, what it is about certain things yeah. that, um, and that bowling ball, I had that bowling ball looking nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, tell you. I had that bowling ball looking real nice. No. You know, even, even like fingerprints, you know, all that stuff. It's really? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that, that, um, that reminds me of my main man, Leonardo, who've, who I've constantly been, um, <laughs> and when, when I read his book, or boy, my boy Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci, first name basis. Um, <laughs> but when I read his um, the book by Walter Isaacson, it's probably one of the most, I would say, probably one of the most important books I've ever read as far as being an artist. But that was his thing; like he just paid attention to stuff, and you know whether it's like. What, what are the textures of a gecko look like? And what, can I look at that and pay attention to it for a year? And he was able to constantly do that. And he wasn't, obviously there's, there's the talented side of you that stays and you practice and you learn how to paint and you, you understand your materials. But then there's this other side that like goes beyond um, just your own, you know, what, what you're physically capable of, like what you're physically capable of remembering or, do, or doing, um, when you, when you observe things in that, in that way, 
like where, where you're very curious, you unlock a different world. Like, I mean, even you just talking about uh, the light of, of water, it's like, there's just so much more. Uh, there's there's uh, insects there in the water that people don't even pay attention to. There's there's dust on TVs that can make something look a lot more real that people are just like, whatever. And, you know, I saw this LinkedIn post, this guy, he posted, he, he wanted some feedback on his, he did like a, a rendering of a chair. And, you know, the chair obviously looks nice, but the thing that makes it more believable are the imperfections. And if you just think like everything is perfect, um, you probably, you're not noticing those small, small things that actually tell the story for your rendering. But now it's, it's a, it's a good point on observation. It's, it's a, it's a valuable skill. And it reminds me when I, when I was working on this project this week, um, I was just so frustrated because I was like, I don't even know where to start. It was a, it was a logo project and I was, I, I had to make like a, a, a mark that was going to be used by this like big organization. And I couldn't get the idea out of my head of what it needed to be. Um, so I just went around looking at as many characters, just, just paying attention to like, what am I looking at? And then I started um, this thing where if I can't solve a problem, a graphic design problem, I'll redraw the, the thing so I could pay attention to it with my hand because I, I've noticed that I, I understand things a lot better um, just by drawing. And that's the way that I observe things. Um, and then once I have that information sort of downloaded into my head, I'm able to play around with it, you know. Um, but it starts off with observing it by physically drawing it. And it's been a game changer for me. It's made my my process a lot smoother and I feel as if I have a little bit more control because for the most part, you know, sitting in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever um, can feel a little bit daunting because there's just so many possible things <laughs> that you could do. But um, like you said, once you step away and you start paying attention to what makes something something, um, you're able to actually start getting creative again. <laughs> yeah, you start to you start to develop, like you said, that process, your own process, because exactly. through like through observing stuff, it makes you want to explore it and explore the way that you understand it. Yeah, you, th you can think back to like grade school, where like, you know, a class like math, or something like like that. Everyone learns differently. You know, some people, some people are you know, can just pick it up when the teacher explains it. Other people need to take the notes and actually like write it out and see it. Other people just need to watch someone do it, you know, go through the process and like everyone kind of picks things up and observes and processes things differently. So as an artist, um, even, you know, even in, in these fields, it's, it's through observing first that you can start to explore more and get more familiar with the way that you can implement that you know better like like what process what processes you have that can that can execute that you know yeah and have you, have you sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead no i was just gonna say um like that what, what do you think is the reason why people are like afraid to to like tap into that part of themselves because because it's like everyone has you know that sense of you know something is something is off or something but like for some reason people don't trust that observation sense where it's like you know because because people know. everybody when, when you see something and you, you you look at it and you're like it looks off but i don't know why you know like you, you were talking about earlier it's, but like, what is the reason why people can't, like, I don't know, what, what have you found, like, from your experience that uh, people can't tap into that as much, the observation? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, um, 
there's something in visual effects. I mean, I don't know if it's in just in visual effects, but there's a term I've only ever heard it used in, in visual effects. It's called the uncanny valley. I know you've heard of that before, right? Mm, maybe. Maybe if it's... The un- on the uncanny valley, you usually see it um, in regards to um, CG faces mm. because there's this there's this level of realism that you get, whether it be in like a video game or just a regular kind of render of a of a CG person, like a face, mm-hmm. to where like it's either okay yes this is fake this is cg i can very much tell and then there gets to a point where it's like it's really real like if it was just like if it was just a photo you may not even be able to distinguish it from a, a, an actual photo but it's a render right that someone did in cg but the minute that you start to add animation and stuff to the face to you know you start to see that there are so many nuances to a real face that we that we don't know mm-hmm. are there, but we know when they're not there. Mm. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Like the small tweaks, like someone's yeah, you know, like all these things, yeah. thousands, thousands of little things that our faces do that you don't think twice of when you see a real person because obviously it's a real person, but when those things are missing in that fake person right because the person didn't animate it right they didn't animate it that way mm-hmm. it's like you notice you're like oh that like i don't know what it is but there's something off about this animated face because it's just i could tell very much so that this isn't a real face uh-huh. because but i but i don't know what it is and and it's probably you know it definitely is something that you could probably um quantify you know like their eyes didn't wrinkle when they like winced or or whatever the case all these little kind of things that um i admire about animators who can nail them you know when when they do like these walk cycles or just all these you know there's i've seen crazy animators just make so such cool things and it's the same thing for them they have Mm -hmm. to observe anatomy they got to be they got to really understand how how things move if they're tasked with with animating a a running lion you know yeah they got to they got to observe all these things so i think i think to your question about people kind of being um not not apprehensive but like not necessarily comfortable like diving into that i think that's kind of what it is you know it's like I don't really know or I'm not necessarily willing to ask the question I guess that's what it what it boils down to mm-hmm. you know yeah it's like it's like you can you you, you just kind of stop there like I know there's something off I don't know what it is yeah but as artists it's like what is it you know mm-hmm. like what like why is this you know, back to the back to the water that I was telling you about, like, why, why the hell is water in its water? Why is it turquoise in the Caribbean and, and gray in Atlantic City? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I had to figure that out. I was like, what, like, what's actually happening? It's it's water. If I poured it into a cup it just be clear but for some reason it's just it's turquoise here Mm -hmm. and it's you know is it the sky is it the sand underneath like it's all these things that once you once you're tasked with actually replicating it you start to appreciate the power of being able to to answer those questions because you can ask them you can ask it about anything yeah and that that makes me think of uh Every time we talk about these, I always remember situations where I felt this feeling of something being off. Uh, when I was in school, I was working on this um, salt shaker pr- uh, project. I had to make like, when you're making something for for people's hands, you don't really, 
I mean, we we have a, a an idea of what we think something feels like, but when you actually put it onto somebody's hands, that's when they start sort of digesting it. And I was making salt and pepper shakers, and the whole time I was working on it, I was like. I remember making like one prototype and it was huge. Obviously I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where it's going, but even just, you know, molding something for somebody's hands takes so much observation just because it's like, I could close my eyes. I would close my eyes and I would, I would like feel this, this object. And even with that, it's like people can tell when something is off just by touching it and that's a superpower, especially if you're able to understand that, you know, that's how people interact with things. We, we're looking at things constantly. So if you're able to ob observe things, you have this, you have this ability to pick up on those things. I mean, those animators that you're talking about, I'm sure like they're constantly staring at people walking or how people- Probably a problem know. for them. Imagine, probably... <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you had a, another thing, uh, you're at a party <laughs> and animators mm -hmm. just staring at you like look at that person smiling and that person's uh, smiling yeah that's like, a nice that's, that's a nice that's a nice smile. lip twitch you mind if i record you real quick <laughs> <laughs> take notes right you mind if i record you can you do that again <laughs> <laughs> no man it's 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 amazing well I, once you tap into that that very human side of you of things that you constantly you know but you don't like you don't know how to explain it yet but the better you get at paying attention to them the better you are at being able to replicate it and you know when you when you make that new thing people won't be like this feels rigid or whatever it is and that's something that i've noticed in like design especially is that people don't know people can tell when a logo is really bad but when a logo feels right it's like you don't have to be a graphic a, designer to yeah. to like question it, you know? And that's always yeah. the and, and I always I can always tell because whenever, you know, me and my team were working on redesigning something is that if we present it to somebody who's never seen it, doesn't know where the project is, they don't question like, you know, what is that? You know, they can tell immediately that whatever you were trying to do, you did it because this feels right. Uh, and I, I think over the years I've, I've gotten better at being able to tell like why things suck, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Those are the best, those are the best like directors and supervisors, you know, and stuff are the ones that are, are able to articulate that, you know, and you can only do that through years and years of, ex of, um observing you know not necessarily experience because you could you could be absent-minded through that whole time and you could have just you know from project to project it's like okay what is this what is this very specific thing that i need to get done and like i, I did it but you could you can go through that process without actually really observing and asking questions and figuring out what it is about that thing that is real it's like the best compliment that visual effects artists can get is i didn't I didn't even know that that was fake <laughs> or I didn't even like, I didn't even what? know there were visual effects in that movie. Yeah. You know, it's like, nice, hey. nice, <laughs> you know? <laughs> nah, man, that's a good point. That's a, that's a very good point. Nah. Have you ever gotten a note from a, from a supervisor where they're like, yeah, you know, it just, it, it's just, it's too, it's too radical. Mm. And you're just like, could you explain? They're like, no, it's like, it's, it's missing. It's missing some, like, it's just missing that, like, jazz, you know? That specific word, jazz? Are you, <laughs> yes. Like, it's just, you're like, yeah, you're like, what does it mean? Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I've definitely gotten that, that type of feedback before. Um, and for the most part, it's, it's always it good. sounds because, too red. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> something about something is off and for the most part it's like unless you know maybe sometimes it's just like a people don't know how to explain it but i've realized like first first impressions are usually correct you know people can tell off the bat and 
I, I'll lean into it and I try and um, what I do, at least from on my, in my industry is like, if, if something doesn't feel right, like a, uh, looking at it on the computer, I'll print it out, I'll look at it. And then maybe the next day I'll look at it again. And if it still doesn't feel right, then it means, you know, <laughs> the, this new refresher version of myself that woke up this morning still doesn't like this thing. My supervisor is not going to like it. <laughs> so back to the drawing board. Yeah. <laughs> and even, and even then too, it, it's like being able to articulate that to your supervisor too. Cause sometimes you wake up and you're like, I still got to show them something today and this is all I have. Yeah. But I found that there's been plenty of times where I've seen, you know, like artists who can't necessarily articulate that and it comes back to bite them where as, as, as in like from the, from the director's perspective, this person just doesn't know what they're doing when them, it's not necessarily the case, mm. but your inability to be able to articulate what's wrong right is like yeah. is worse than the thing being wrong it, it's it's not a problem that you that you show the director or whatever the case is you know the client something that's not necessarily that great yeah. but if you if you if you're able to 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 say hey listen I you know this is you know I've been working on this this is what I got for today but I think it's missing this it's missing this and and this is my plan to like if you can really articulate that well then 10 times out of 10 they're going to be like yeah okay yeah like i i see that go do your thing <laughs> yeah you know like it, it, with confidence okay sure yeah. that's 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 a good point cuz that shows i mean that's the difference between like just starting off in your career and you don't really know like and you don't have the direction for the thing you're kind of just throwing things out hoping that something sticks that's the difference between you know actually knowing what you're doing and uh, being able to come up to your supervisor with solutions instead of like hey here's another problem that i need you to help me navigate it's a very yeah. i think it's a great sign of maturity in your in your craft to be able to mm -hmm. say you know this is what i'm on to work on and i've noticed that like that's that's the biggest um, getting direction back from your supervisor and helping them navigate, you know, some of the issues that you felt sort of your, your thought pattern, it, it's night and day between, you know, the conversations that you have, because you're, you're almost, you're helping them get to a certain level and then they're helping you get to the next level, um, by, you know, presenting them, Hey, this is, this is where that's, I'm thinking <laughs> with this. And that's this probably better. That's probably um, that's probably why people come to Rick Rubin, like we were talking about a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. I bet you his the way his mind works is a very observational thing, and and something that we haven't talked about a ton um, is as far as creativity and arts goes, is like um, like performers, right? Like we're you know we're bringing out um in visual effects and stuff we're creating these worlds that are supposed to look real you know oftentimes they do because you know people are very good mm -hmm. you know you may be painting something that's you're trying to get it to look real or something in reality or working on a logo like you said that's kind of off or uncanny mm -hmm. but then there's also like you know dancers or actors right or comedians you know like these uh performers um is you know is is art also and and they're like being able to observe the, you know the best the best of the best in those arenas comedy and acting and you know that's i'm sure they'll be the first to tell you that's like one of the most important muscles to to strengthen is is that observational ability to be able to dissect, ask questions, answer those questions, and then be able to portray to others that moment in time so that they actually feel like they were there with you or they, you know, they, they get the joke or, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, yeah. connecting with people because it's like, dang, yeah, I, 
I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That and that's that that's that intuition. You can't you can't learn mm -hmm. that in school. You can't you can't you know no one can tell you how to practice that. It's just constant. You're constantly looking at the world for feedback. You're constantly having conversations with yourself um, about direction or whatever it is. But like when I when I was when I decided you know that I want to pursue graphic design full time, I remember getting a bunch of books and thinking that oh like for me to get to the next level, I have to I have to learn this program a little bit better. I have to um, get certified. I have to like make my portfolio look like you know, all these different things that, you know, flashing and getting people's attention. But honestly, for the last two, three years, all I've been trying to get better at is that is like paying attention as I'm working, you know, asking myself questions. And it's, I've, I would, I would, I can confidently say that I've experienced the most growth in, in my career just by paying attention to myself. And I didn't even like, I didn't like go outside and like talk to more people or something, you know, it was just like me just paying attention as I was working. Along. Yeah. Just like that, that, that was literally it because that's, that's kind of what people think. Like they'll, if I learn, if I watch more YouTube videos, maybe I'll get a little bit better. Or if I get a new just book. Because that's what we, that's what we're like so used to through, yeah. through all of school and in college, it's like, we kind of, we kind of get that ingrained that that's, you know, I feel like we have that, like we all kind of have that because it's like we get started on it young, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's, it's kind of, you got to unfortunately go a little bit against the grain to develop your mind to be the more of the observational mind because like we're inclined through school and universities and all that to think that I just need to know this thing. I need to, I just need to know this thing and to get better at these things so that I can do this thing. Yeah. When in reality, it's just about, you know, have you ever worked with a, uh, like director or something whose technical ability is like nothing special? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm sh like I feel like more often than not, that's the case. You know? Yeah. So 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 it's like you don't you don't like question them in like a negative way. Like how did you get you know like what are your qualifications? But like when you really kind of think about it, you know I don't know I don't really know the backstory of most of the like directors that I've kind of worked with, but I imagine that. For the most part, is they've been they were able to communicate to someone, right, and and to get people to have confidence in them and their ability to like observe and bring out that vision that they, you know, that they're asking for. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. It's it's like you don't you don't necessarily you don't get to be a supervisor director just because you're the best. <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> at photoshop you know what i mean yeah like exactly that's the difference yeah no that's that's a good point i've definitely worked with people who have just been to just it's like they they just see things that i didn't even notice they'll pick out mm -hmm. and it's it, and it's happened so quickly it's almost like they were just ready for for that thing and i'm when they well they'll when they'll say it i'll just be like i don't even know how i didn't see that it was so so obvious, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, now that you bring it out, but it's like, it completely changes the thing because I'll notice, you know, I'll be working on a project and, you know, I'll spend like two days on it, you know, just picking at it, thinking like, oh yeah, like this is good. Like everything is clean. It makes sense. Like the hierarchy of the information is correct. And then my supervisor could be like that. Why is that there? And I'll just be like, <laughs> I can't. And then it, it's like, you know, move it here, put it here. And then the whole thing is now like 30 times better. Um, mm -hmm. It's, and it, that's what it comes back down to that. It's like, they, they observe something and they can, they can read the emotion of the piece a lot faster than I can. 
so it just lets me know like that's something I need to work on being able to like pick it up. It's also important to know because you also got to remember that they always know when you're in that position, you have to always know what the greater picture is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy when you're, when you're kind of the worker working on this specific thing, part of the project to compartmentalize yourself into that, you know, area. That's true. So it's like, I'm working on this, this logo, I'm working on this water, you know, for this shot and it looks great. I think it looks great. But then when you, when you hand it up the line, it's important to remember that like, the best supervisors are the best observers and they're seeing everything, knowing what the bigger picture is, you know? So it's like this grand scheme of things, essentially when you hand it to them, it's like they can instantly see if it's going to fit, if it's going to, if it's going to plug in, if it's going to kind of convey what needs to be conveyed, you know? And I think about if you're, taking on any kind of venture on your, of your own. Um, I think a lot of people, unfortunately in industries, you know, close to ours and in ours have been kind of laid off and stuff over the past 12 months. There's been a lot of layoffs and everything. And I know just by the nature of that, there are a lot of people who are, um, just looking elsewhere and, and kind of reevaluating, um, you know, what they do and what they want to do and where they want to go. And if you're in that position, it's important to flex these muscles, ob- yeah. observing, observing yourself and also being able to see that bigger picture of what you want for yourself, you know, to be able to know if this particular piece of it or the next piece or, you know, you know, how they fit in your story. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like everything, you know, everything is like these skills that we use every day. They're, they're skills that we use in like our, ourselves too. Yeah. I think, and I know we're coming up on time. I think that's a good place to to start closing down, but yeah, it just paying attention, especially like right now, it's, it's such a chaotic time in the industry. I'm sure like the industry is like, taking a lot of hits. A lot of these big tech companies are laying off a lot of people and that affects all of us. Even if, you know, even if you still have a job, um, all this talent that is um, felt, you know, that right now feels as if like they don't know where to go. It's affecting like everyone. Um, So it's important to, uh, to kind of, you know, take, take some time. It's easier it's easier said, you know, um, to, to, to just take some time, but just take some time to observe yourself and what you can do. Um, and just to not tie yourself to not having a job because that's not, there, there's just so much more to being an artist than, than what these corporations think you're worth. If, if you were let go, they give you. Mm-hmm. yeah, that, that condition, that value that they place upon you, um, you have much, much more, uh, capabilities than a job can just restrict you at. So yeah, yeah. just, just hang in there y'all. Yeah. You're, you are, you are very powerful. You are, um, you know, to be an artist, you gotta be, and obviously, you know, being, being laid off is, is no laughing matter because, things go on you know your your comfort level whatever your situation is but just from the standpoint you know if if you can um just gotta remember from the standpoint of just you your ability your self-esteem your confidence you know has absolutely nothing to do with with um whether you hold a position or not you know it's it's like you know like like jeff said we're it's a strange um you know, strange, uncomfortable kind of downtime in a lot of creative industries, but it's not a, it's not a, um, an 
indictment on the creatives. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that we're we're uh you know we're all badasses, so we're gonna you know we're gonna have more more than enough opportunities to to showcase that. It's just a matter of um you know making that determination. Yeah, absolutely. Should we close off? That's, That's it? the pot. That's the pot, y'all. See you next week. See y'all.